Okay, so first off, though, I want to thank both of you for taking time out of your day to come on here and join the interview. Uh, definitely does mean a lot. Um, so besides both of you being total badass and extremely talented women, please introduce yourselves to everybody. Hi, I'm Bonnie Ahrens. I'm Chrissy Fox. Awesome. And uh, what I want to do really is just start with like a few, like two quick questions for each of you. Um, so whoever wants to start first. So what made you want to go into this type of career and who was your biggest inspiration or you could say biggest inspiration still? You want to go first, Bonnie? Okay. Um, what made me want to go in this career? Well, um, it was um, something I enjoy doing and something that is, um, you know, I can do, even though it's been, you know, it's, I've had a lot of, you know, difficulties doing my career, a lot of, you know, a lot of different things like uh, disor my disorders of autism and, and being on the, the, the spectrum of Asperger's and, and then how I look. And so it's, it's but I just want to keep doing it. So I just keep doing it. So, but my greatest inspiration has got to be my mother telling me, don't let anybody stand in your way. You can do it. You can do it with everybody telling me I can't do it. Yeah. That's awesome. And even um, though she's passed away, she's still my biggest inspiration. That's great though. Great. Yeah. For me, um, what made me, well, I was born in a really small town and a lot of people were very small minded there. And I always had this entertainment bug. I really wanted to be an actress. Um, and I really was into music and writing. And so I started with the acting thing as a kid and I loved it. And, you know, I, I started writing music and it just kind of unfolded naturally. And I started writing scripts and, and then I got to a point, honestly, the biggest turning point was sort of right before COVID got really bad. I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to make this short film. I put it in a, in some festivals. It did super well. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. Cause if nobody liked it, nobody wanted it, then, you know, that maybe would tell me something. So I was like, I should keep going. And then COVID happened and it was really like scary and intense at the beginning. Cause nobody knew what, what was going to happen or, or what it was. And, you know, we didn't have the understanding we do now. So I, I had this feature idea and the script I'd been working on. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to just go for it. Now, all these great actors are home. We can do this safely. We can test, we can keep crews and everything very small and just, you know, stagger cast and we can shoot it in sections and just see how far we can get. And we ended up finishing a whole film. So I think, for me, it's just been like a natural progression. And I think that it just shows you that if you want to do something, just, just do it. You know what I mean? And just let it happen naturally. But you know, it's not, it's not going to come to you. You just have to, you have to make your own opportunities. That's always what I say, because oh. everything I've ever, ever, you know, succeeded in is because I've made my own opportunity. So um, yeah, I'm super proud of this film. And for, as for inspirations, I mean, a lot of things, a horror, the horror genre in general was a big influence on me. Like the first time I saw it, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> or oh my, that's, that's it for me too. That's what got me into it. <laughs> right. It, it just was like that feeling of being so utterly terrified and like disgusted and just like, but you still just want, want more. <laughs> and so you know what? He, could really, that was really he could really be, that could really happen. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that, yeah, that's well, one of the well, most that really happen. That's yep. what makes it so right. It, it does. That's the thing. It does. So oh. it's. I think. Uh, I think um, those type of films are the scariest to me. Real people who are monsters. You know, um, that that's terrifying. So you know, just just seeing a lot of films, uh, the love of music, and and just a lot of different people inspired me, honestly, in, in a lot of different films. Like I love the film American Beauty. I've, that's always been one of my favorite mm -hmm. movies. And, and it was, and it's a totally different type of movie, but it did something to me and made me like really want to, when I write, like unravel characters and show people's flaws. And I thought that that film did that so well. And um, so, yeah, honestly, it was just a lot of different people, a lot of different um, directors inspired me, but it, it's just kind of everything all at once. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, that's cool though. I can definitely relate to the small town thing because where I'm at, that's, it's a very, uh, very small town and the stereotypes. In North Carolina, it's like Winston-Salem area. And, oh, nice. Yeah, I like it there. 
yeah winston's i'm close to winston so i'm not quite in there that's a city but it's a very very small city so i can definitely where'd you grow up at um i grew up in canada uh, on okay this island called vancouver island and in, in this oh super yeah small town called campbell river and it was like north and yeah it's it's grown a lot Mm -hmm. in the more recent years but when I was growing up it was like there was nothing we you know I remember when we got a Starbucks I was an adult at that point I would go home and visit and like, <laughs> here we have a Starbucks and I'm like you know it's definitely that type of place so you know everyone's very different there than me and you know and which is fine and you know it, it's kind of nice sometimes to get yeah. away from go away from entertainment stuff but um but yeah I definitely I was an alien for most of my life <laughs> So. Uh, I can totally relate. So let's talk about Frank, though, for sure. So Frank's going to be coming out October 25th. Um, you're going to have that on streaming platforms, right? Correct. Yeah, it'll be on VOD. So Apple, Amazon, you know, anywhere that you rent or buy. Um, we're hoping the pre-order will be available slightly before. So um, okay. yeah, I'll make sure to post a lot about it if you follow us on socials and Bonnie too. So, but yeah, it was a uh, yeah, a film made out of love and this crazy, fun, scary, but funny, like monster movie that um, a brief synopsis, basically this girl, Ruby Chase, has this very violent relationship with her boyfriend. Um, and one night him and his friends come home and they're on drugs and they, they just, he starts beating on her and she realizes like, he's going to kill me. They're mm -hmm. going to kill me. So she starts praying and, you know, she's not a religious person. She doesn't really know what she's doing. And she ends up getting her prayers answered by this like demon from the underworld, basically. And he makes her vow a lifetime of servitude to him in order to help her get out of the scenario. So she does it. It ends up being too dark for her. So she ends up killing herself. And uh, ultimately it just sends this ripple effect where the monster is really angry that she broke the deal and so he goes on a bloody rampage of revenge through everyone that's connected to her who has a vulnerability all leading to her little sister who she loved the most and so bonnie plays a medium mr mm -hmm. c in the film and she narrates the film because obviously she's all seeing she she's in tune with the dead and um so she's in the big finale section of the film and also you hear her throughout it so it was great yes. That's amazing. So it's like, it's different stories, right? Like separate stories within the film. It's, it is, but it isn't, you know, I, I don't use the word anthology for this film because everyone's connected mm -hmm. and it's all based around this one storyline and the same monster. And ultimately people come back, people cross over. And at the end, you know, some characters come back and it, it's just this big reveal. So, so yeah, it's not really a classic anthology. It's, it's a connected anthology, I guess, but, um, but yeah, there is multiple stories, five different stories. Um, Forest, Real, Alone, Nobody, Kill are the names of the stories and it spells Frank. Oh, okay. That's really cool. That's <laughs> awesome. You. So you write, direct, edit, and even star in the film, correct? Yes. Yes. And she does the music. That's very <laughs> impressive. That's, I mean, it'd be one thing just to write or direct it, but that's, I don't know how you do that. Thank you. Uh, it was it was a it was a crazy thing to take on because it's one thing to make a short film over you know a day or two, but it's a whole other thing to to make a feature. But I just have this great team around me and the actors. It was like it was so easy. We did so much. We did so much preparation ahead, and we did a lot of work with the cast ahead. So when we went in to shoot, it was like easy. We you know everyone knew what they were doing, and when I say easy, it wasn't easy, but. <laughs> it was as easy as it could be you know <laughs> so how many days did it take to shoot the film um I think when we added it up it was six or seven days we shot the whole wow. film Bonnie's section which honestly when you see it it should have probably been a week shoot we did it in one day and that was the oh first time I worked with Bonnie the first time I met her in real life and uh that's that's when we became really good friends and we now we work on other things together so um but yeah she was a trooper because that was an insane day and you know when you're dealing with making a monster too we'd make the monster wasn't a suit it was like made on a person so that was hours and hours every time we do the monster and, and uh yeah so it was it was crazy <laughs> right Bonnie <Monsters> so cool <laughs> Frank is a really cool new monster see I love the originality of it that's that's really cool Thank so you. Bonnie you only shot for one day then right that's correct 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even just six or seven days. That's, that is insane. I couldn't do much in six or seven days. Well, you just, you know, do it. You yeah. Just do it. Yeah. You just, if you, you have just to do, do it, it. You, do it. <laughs> you just get in that mode and you just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, it would have been nicer to have a few days off doing that. <laughs> yes. Just did it and it came out great. Yeah. Oh, it, it's, I think it's going to be amazing. It's, you know, it's, it is. It's, it's, so it's, yeah. how were you introduced to her, Bonnie? And like, so y'all weren't friends before this. This is yeah. y'all met. And we're not this. friends anymore now either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met Chrissy. I got a phone call from a friend of mine that I've known for many, many years, her really talented actress, Azure Parsons. Did you okay. see um, uh, 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 Salem? Remember yeah. that show? Okay, do you remember the actress? She played the one that got pregnant with the with the with the preacher's son. Remember, she was like a she was a hooker. She was a prostitute. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. And they were gonna, you know, we got her cat, whatever. Yeah, that's Azure Parsons. She was okay. also astronauts' wives club. Phenomenal actress. Well, I've known her for years, and she called me up and said, you know, there's this friend of mine, and she's doing this little short, and you know, this film that she's making would be like, you know, one day, and it's a really great role for you. And That's awesome. yeah, I said, send me the stuff. And Chrissy sent me this, you know, and Azure had Chrissy call me and send me the stuff. And I was like, wow, now this is. <laughs> so I read the whole script and I'm like, I'm in. Let's do it. What the hell? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it was so flowed so beautifully. And to how she tied everything in um, was so impressive. And all that she was doing, you know, all by her little self. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible script. So. I mean, it was a no brainer. Gosh, that's awesome. So how were you really able to push through like during the filming process? We were obviously in the time of COVID and everything. So I know everything else was shut down. It, it had to be yeah. really hard to make that happen. It was super hard and all the actors are SAG actors. So, you know, we had to follow all the SAG protocols. There was a lot of testing done constantly. Yeah. Um, super, super small, like the crew, it was bare bones. So a lot of people are doing multiple jobs. Um, I'm lucky because my team, my DP, Andy Patch and, and my sound guy, David, and like, and then obviously my special effects team, Gitsy and Tyler and Ashley, they were all like, you know, they all did their one job, but then we had other, we had, you know, a, a grip and we had, you know, a, a few um, production assistants, but really super tiny. And I really tried Wait, to make didn't Michelle and it play, play this do those roles. So you had this person yes. doing who was also the editor doing working with you, doing little roles and stuff like that, and then doing and then yeah, no. So I what one of my very best friends in the world, Michelle, she's she actually does a lot of the post music with me for my my films. But um but she came in and production managed because honestly, I couldn't have done a lot of it without her. There'd be like resetting, like um, in the fourth story, actually Azure Parsons, who we mentioned, she she has a story within the film and uh, and her scene, her stuff was crazy. There was like, we had a part where like feathers were exploded all over the entire room and, and then blood, so everything's sticking to, and then Frank is like melting and it's just, it was crazy. So Michelle would have to like, reset super fast over and like things like that that you don't that normally you'd have a larger crew and you would not think about but I, I couldn't do that and keep everybody safe and you know I, I just was not comfortable even the possibility of someone getting COVID on my set so um so yeah she was great and then I have this thing with her she's basically Phoebe from Friends she's like a total like hippie kind of girl <laughs> That's funny. And so I make her do like really bizarre characters in all my films and like music videos and stuff. So she got to play a monster in this film. She got to play like one of the drug addict roommates of my boyfriend. And, and so she, I like would put her in random stuff because it's just kind of a fun thing now. And I think that she's not an actress, but she, I think she kind of has the horror bug of now wanting to do horror films because of it. Oh, that's, that's great. So explain, explain your character a little bit, Bonnie, if you can. Um, well, she, um, she, she's a, a, a psychic and a medium and, and she, so this, this uh, uh, entity, she has been sensing this entity ever since it was brought forth, you know, through Ruby Chrissy's character. And since, I mean, since they end up there, she could see it coming. So she, I narrated the story going right. through and then 
she they why i don't want to spoil it yeah don't don't but spoil like, anything <laughs> all knowing she's an all-knowing psyche so by the, time, by the time they get to her get to her uh she's uh, frank is 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 pretty much there within her i mean it's been frank is just infiltrates all of ruby's connections and surroundings and you know so it, i don't still want to spoil do any spoilers well, Bonnie, yeah. Bonnie is like she basically emotes what all these people have gone through, and she was amazing in this. She's very um, her character plays opposite these three teenage characters, so you can imagine how intimidating and intense Bonnie is. But yes. the cool thing about this film for Bonnie is that she she's literally in sweatpants and a sweatshirt, like no makeup, like very like which you know often she's like got the crazy like nun makeup or whatever she's doing or, or with Jacob's wife she was like the crazy vampire and so this was cool because it was just raw Bonnie and she has such an intense presence anyway opposite these kids it was like it was magic it was really awesome yes there's a one I've seen a clip where it's uh I mean I don't think it's spoiling anything it must be in the trailer but the <laughs> PP kid comes up or they're all standing there him and the girls and says something to Bonnie they're like yeah we call him PP and then these are my bitches and then she's like well I'll call you Peter because or whatever his name is because I'm not your bitch I'm like yeah. I, it's, it's hilarious it's definitely the her playing herself for sure I love it yeah thank you great all right so really the way this film was created though should I feel like it should inspire a bunch of people to be able to push through um just uncertain times like what kind of advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers or actors and I mean I feel like this should be definitely part of that because you did it during one of the most uncertain times we've ever been through. Yeah, you know what? Like, I'm sure Bonnie has some of her own advice too, but I've always said, you know, if, if you want to do something, you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that, you know, a lot of people like, I don't have the money to shoot something, you know, with, with the kind of, any kind of budget. It's like, okay, well, what do you need? You need a camera, um, you need a location, you need a good actor. I'm sure you can, you know, throw a rock. You can find someone who's an aspiring DP. You can, you can find someone who is going to school to be a rock. You might find a good dog to use. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, it's just totally right. Yeah, it's like you, you just gotta make what you can within your capability because, you know, um, if you really want to be a filmmaker or you really want to be a cinematographer or you want to be a special effects makeup artist or an actor, like. You just have to make something. You make a short for next to nothing, show what you can do. And then there's something out there in the world that, you know, people can pay attention to that will help you get to the next step. And um, yeah, there's there's no excuse not to just do, make something within mm -hmm. your capability and, and go for it and make your own opportunities. So that's all I've ever done. And I know Bonnie, that's been her entire life. It's just, you know, pushing and doing anything she can, you know, doing a film like this but Bonnie didn't know me and you know we did this independently and but she believed in the script and she believed it she's like you know this is going to showcase my acting and and it's a different type of role for me I'm interested in this so you do it you know and you go for it and uh yeah you just find a great group of people that are like-minded and really driven like you are and there's no reason not to make something great yeah, I couldn't agree more what do you think Bonnie same kind of thing yeah, absolutely. Well, the thing is, you know, as far as an actor, it can be it get very discouraging. Yeah, you got told a no a lot, didn't you? Oh, I know you've told oh, me that. No, no, no. Get a nose job. Do this. You know, do you know? You can. Nobody wants to look. You know, it can get very discouraging. Yes. But um, through all that discouragement, if you really still, they can't discourage you. If you mm -hmm. really still want to do it, you're going to find a way. I mean. I used to back, you know, in the early, when I arrived here in uh, like 19, 1989 or 1990, I used to hand deliver my headshots like Star Trek. Cause I, I mean, on a weekly basis, I used to drive to the office and just dump it off. Hey, I'm still not in Star Trek, but I still <laughs> have hope. I still have hope. <laughs> you're doing okay, Bonnie. You're doing okay. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's, but right now in this day and age, I mean, actors have the internet to use. There yeah. are things like they can go on the social medias and connect with people there, put up little things. So they have a, a lot of tools that really can help them achieve to, to, to meet people that are doing films and that need actors. So, I mean, you know, if, they, if you really want to do something, you're just going to do it or you'll just go on to doing something else. You will find a way. Yeah. And, you know. 
You will. Yes. You yeah, I agree. I, I think it maybe it's even gotten easier with time. I don't know for sure, but I think with the social media, it's had to get a little bit easier than it used to be. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, people can put up their own YouTube thing and exactly. Bam, bam, they they got they haven't they can get an audience. Yeah, and once you find a great crew of people that are like you, that you're making cool shit with, don't let them go. Like that's that's you know my my crew is never going anywhere. I won't let them. So, you know it, it's it's all about finding people you connect with and you love to work with, and you know finding different ways to work together all the time in different projects. Yes, definitely. So well, Bonnie, let's. Really got, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, and different to do different. Right. It's help, it helps when you when you when you find someone really creative get to meet someone really creative like chrissy yes. <laughs> write things the meet you know oh she's got ideas you know and you're brilliant like that oh, thank <laughs> you well you're pretty brilliant yourself bunny <laughs> yeah i think both of you are so is this your first uh like feature film chrissy Yes, Frank is my first feature. Um, my second feature is going to be out in December, which actually stars Bonnie um, because of the Frank connection. But yeah, this is my this is my debut, and um, I'm I'm super proud of it. You know, it's it's when you want to be a filmmaker, there's a lot of pressure making your first film, and I I kind of am grateful for the way this had to be made and the way it came to be because, you know, at this point, I'm like I can do anything with and anything I'm handed. So, you yeah. know what I mean? So someone wants to give me, you know, $30 million to make a movie. And it's like, at this point, it's like, okay, cool, great. But, you know, I could probably make 30 movies for that. You know? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You really could. <laughs> so y'all want to talk about I Live Alone at all? Or are you still want to kind of hold off on that? Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah. Um, I know Bonnie's very excited about it too. So, well, I'll start it off and I know Bonnie will have a lot to say about this. So after we did Frank, um, Bonnie and I became good friends and I got to know her a little bit. And I, uh, I had this weird idea and this weird thought about people who choose to live their lives alone and how they don't have all the distractions that most people do in their everyday life that, you know, they're not like families and dating and, you know, bars and clubs. They're just like, they, they see the world a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was an interesting concept. So I came up with this character, Aunt Len, who's this really weird reclusive woman. She's lived alone for over 40 years. She doesn't like people in her space. She's agoraphobic. When she goes out to her garden, she basically like gears up to go to war <laughs> in case, you know, and, and so she, she gets a call and, and her sister's sick and her niece has to come stay with her. So um, it's very uncomfortable for her and her niece is 16. So she comes, her, it's played by Nolling Morena, who is an amazing actress. Uh, and she comes in and, uh, stays with Aunt Len and starts suspecting that there's something weirder going on with Aunt Len, who's like going on these weird rants about her being attacked. And then she starts suspecting her aunt is a serial killer. Um, a lot more craziness ensues, but the film has a big twist that we, you know, don't want to spoil for people, but yeah, Bonnie was insanely great. And she, she did these like really made some really cool, bizarre choices that I think she's the only one who could have played on Len. I think Bonnie has a lot of theories about, you know, the government and aliens and, and, um, you know, just, and she does live alone and she, and so obviously Monica's not a full insane person, but I did pull from like little things and conversations I'd had. And I knew that she would nail her monologues because there is parts of Aunt Len that she's passionately connected to. So yeah. Um, what do you want to say, Bonnie? What do you think? Yeah, it, it wrote, it wrote it a bit, uh, uh, off of me, that's for sure. But uh, it's just, it was, it's actually, it's such a perfect example of what someone can do was, okay, so Chrissy wanted to do another film and then she used what she had without making, you know, cause we're still in the time of the COVID without making a big brouhaha of it, a one person thing in one space and one, you know, one location and the fewest actors. And I think that that is a prime example of somebody doing using with with you know what they have got to work with and you know and all of these other problems with COVID and everything. But 
it's so original, such an original story. This um, uh, I Live Alone. It's such a great name for a film. <laughs> it is. It's perfect. And I do. I live alone. And by the way, I'm not living alone by choice. I was living <laughs> they, they by the way, give Bonnie a call if you're interested. She's down. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll put her number up at the bottom of the screen at the end of this interview. <laughs> there you go, perfect. <laughs> how much she loves me. <laughs> oh my god, I've been trying to convince Bonnie to let me do a reality show called Dating Bonnie Aarons, and we just like try to oh set her up. Gosh. On <laughs> right. yes. She won't let me. It's not nice. <laughs> no, I'm so down. That would be perfect, Bonnie. Come on. God. <laughs> but you yeah, guys the other- insane. <laughs> <laughs> it would be amazing. You guys are insane in the membrane. Anyway. Well, yeah, but I live alone. I feel like the coolest part about this film is there's a lot of pacing within it, but and a lot of tension building. But when there gets to gore and gets to like some of Bonnie's crazy scenes, which some of it you see in the trailer, oh my god, does she go for it? And we we like make you uncomfortable within the gore that does happen within the film. Oh, you really, you, you, make, you Chrissy just she went for it. <laughs> you went. She there was there's no hold back. <laughs> but what's great about the movie moves very fast. It's very, it's really intense, and it's just such a joy ride to watch. <laughs> the film. It really is. It was it's as, it's as much fun to watch as it was to make, I think. And and uh, you know, I our makeup girl Ashley, um, Ashley Stansbury. She she we like brainstormed so much on some of the the death scenes and the gore. Like we use there's a section where. We use like real meat within the oh, action. Nice. So like, you know, there's just like, it's just disgusting. And that's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming out of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, the inspiration is coming through. And yeah, wait till you see Bonnie like going for it in that scene. I've had so many people ask me about that because, like, how did you get her to get like that? I'm like, well, if you tell Bonnie to go for it, she's going <laughs> to she destroy the dummy. Like, the dummy is like this really expensive, like, life cast dummy that had it. And, not, and she like, broke through all the casing and rip Meg. She's I dead. I did. I broke through all of the casing. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. Her head and her hands are in my closet. And like, that's all that's left of her. So. Wow. Bad. Yeah. I think when Bonnie and I first met, you showed me that trailer and it, it was really good. It's I'm very excited. I'm excited for both of them, but I, I'm going to assume I live alone. a little more gory, a little more um, I don't... different way. Different, in a, in way. A different way. Like the monster shit is, it like is more of the gore I think in Frank but there's definitely some moments in Frank that are like whoa that's gross and really scary but it's just a little bit I feel like Frank's a little bit more has more funny elements too um but then I live alone Bonnie it's like it's (laughs) funny even though it's not intentionally slapstick trying to be funny it's like you Aunt Lan is so bizarre that it, you laugh through the whole thing. Kind you know, of, it's really bizarre. The whole yeah. it's, it's, this, it's really bizarre. The it is the, the dialogue is it's just it's unbelievable. It's that shit crazy. It is. it is by far. I tell everyone the weirdest movie I've ever made. Like people who see it are like, I'm like I know it's it. There's I, a very it's a very clear story. A very cool twist, but it is. I I went for the weirdness in that one. So yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very clear. And, it's, yeah. and 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 there's a gigantic twist and it's it's fun it's really really fun <laughs> it is. it's fun to watch the thing I, yeah, I think everybody will be excited for that so you're a big practical effects person right yeah I if it doesn't matter how what my budget would be in any I would always opt for that um thank you I, though that, I hope you make it huge because that's what we need we need more practical effects I just think it feels so much scarier. I feel yes. like a lot of times, like sometimes you have to use CGI. There's no way around it, but mm-hmm. um, I, it's it can take you out of it if it if it isn't done perfectly. And um, I just I remember I uh, I was in uh, Underworld Evolution. That's right. Like yeah. Empire, and they have all the werewolves are like people on stilts and costumes. And um, I just remember thinking that that was just so cool that they they used you know it wasn't just like oh a full cgi werewolf and i just have such an appreciation when films do that and and practical effects are not the easier route it's no way yeah you know, so many things can go wrong sometimes you only have one chance and yeah and and you know i've i've had things go perfectly i've had things be like okay we got to make this work somehow and 
but it it's ultimately a better payoff I think and it makes the film cooler so yeah I'm, I'm glad you appreciate them too I think I think a lot of people get excited when you talk about doing practical effects and you have the right makeup people um and you know working with Ashley on I Live Alone she was yeah, the like, right yeah practical yeah the right person she she is like hilarious because I called her the other day I was in the Starbucks drive through and I was like we have the weirdest conversations I'm like what do you think about like we like took like an axe but then we like, put it in a guy's butt and she's like yeah and then what if it came what the heck? Like, you know, <laughs> I just I'm just making it but like that's our conversation she'd be like oh and then what if it like split down the middle and the bugs came out you know it's just like we're just like that's our whole conversation our whole friendship and then the Starbucks like, person is like yeah what yeah. do you want today <laughs> yeah over yeah. here and all of that <laughs> <laughs> they're probably terrified that's yeah. really cool though practical effects i definitely think are always going to reign king in horror movies agreed 100 percent. that and you're going to be so impressed that woman ashley is absolutely yeah. phenomenal very, that's very great awesome. so do you have a definitive date for this movie to come out yes december 21st it comes to vod uh we partnered with gravitas ventures and um so yeah, it will be available. Uh, there will be a pre-order a month prior that we're going to nice. we'll obviously post about. So if people want to get in on it early and we're going to be really uh, starting to release some fun teasers and we have a few um, possible special screenings coming up prior that we will be announcing soon, which is really exciting. So we're very, we're really excited. You know, uh, Frank is right around the corner and then it's, it's just going to be like, you know, horror movie madness all the way till Christmas. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Christmas movie. Go to Aunt Lynn's yeah. Christmas. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Perfect for people who are lonely around Christmas time. There you go. Or it's funny. I, I asked Gravitas. I was like, is there really, is it weird to release something so close to Christmas like this? They're like, like, no, we find that people really, really mm -hmm. respond. I'm like, I get it. Like a lot of people are either going home and they have a lot of downtime or maybe their family isn't all that great and they just need to relax with a good horror movie so it's, it's cool you know we're excited yeah well for me i watch a horror movie probably every day something horror related <laughs> i fall asleep to it somehow oh yeah no i know i'm the exact same way it's like yeah what what's your favorite film you've seen in the most recent you know past few months Ooh, that's tough isn't that like that's came out in the patent recently, I guess. Yeah, or that you ha you never saw and you you just saw it recently. If I must be honest, then it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. I think I saw okay. it when I was young, but I mm -hmm. fell in love with that movie. It's great. About over the past year, and I could I could watch it every night. I really <laughs> could. That's amazing. What about you? What do you think? I'm trying to think what was you know something. You know, th this past year, I wasn't necessarily the past couple months, but I really liked, um, as in newer films, I really liked The Dark and the Wicked. I really liked um, oh, yeah. The Lodge. I thought that movie was like really the Lodge surprising. is good, yeah. I just like, there's a couple times I was just like, oh, what the hell, <laughs> what just happened? So I, I really, there. I have a list. Oh, I really liked this film that I think a lot of people didn't realize how horror-based it was, but it was, it's called Spontaneous. Okay. And um, it's about these kids in this high school class that start spontaneously combusting and they don't know why, <laughs> like fully they're in class and they just get coated in someone's like body. <laughs> and I thought that it was so great in the storyline and, and the, it was just like, if you have a chance to see it, you have to see it. It's so I'll good. definitely watch that. Yeah. What about you, Bonnie? Yeah, I was going to ask. Maybe she's not as crazy as us. <laughs> oh, <she is. laughs> so I, watch, I watch a lot. Yeah. Um, I recently, I love the Midnight Mass. Oh, yeah. I love, I love the Dark and the Wicked. That fucked me up. That was really, really well done. That was so good. But recently, I, I really enjoyed the Midnight Mass on, on Netflix, and I enjoyed um, Notebooks. And I, I, you know, I like that, that, that director, his work his, a lot. He did that Brightburn. Did you guys see Brightburn? Brightburn's pretty yeah, good. I thought that was yeah. great. Very original. Yeah, he's he's a great director. I've met him a few times. We have mutual friends, and he's a super talented guy. And uh, you really liked *Malignant* too, Bonnie. You, you're like really, you're like really I excited. Like, I did like *Malignant*. I thought it was it was. I I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. it was really good. I knew. Okay, to me, before it even came out, it was apparent because *Malignant*, *Malignant* tumor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I knew. I, I Spoiler knew. alert. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everybody, what's malignant mean to you? Yeah, just, that's, yeah. No, that's what I thought too, yeah. yeah. yeah but I thought it was, I thought it was very enjoyable. It was very entertaining. The actors were great and I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he doesn't tend to disappoint, you know? Yeah, there's, James there's some really that. cool shots in that film that I was like, oh, shot. That's just, that's my thing about him. The way he shoots these films, it's mind boggling. Well, he does a lot of uh, long, like in The Conjuring 2, they were all long one shots. Yes. Yeah. Which is so difficult, but also so rewarding when you watch it. You're like, oh my God, you're, you're so in it, which I love. I loved the the scene where she's like running through the house and it's the camera's yeah. like above her and she's following her. I thought that was so Yes, cool. that was so trippy, honestly. That's yeah. I remember seeing that in the trailer and I was like, that's kind of what drew me in, seeing some of that. I'm like, yeah. And plus James Wan is just yeah, he does it's amazing. Job. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about the conjuring two and the nun, Bonnie, if you don't mind. Um so how really did you figure out about the role of playing the nun in the conjuring two where it started? Oh, I just, I went on an audition in the con for The Conjuring 2. I didn't even know it was, it was the audition was called um, the Untitled James Wan film. Now I'm a huge James Wan, <laughs> Wan fan. So I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, I'd be running. Yeah. <laughs> and there was no script, no nothing. The direction was you go in there and you scare the shit out of everybody. Really? Okay. Yeah. So um, there was no, I didn't know whatever. And then I went on it. And so I was very determined <laughs> so I got, then I got the call back and they said the call back you're gonna work with the director James Wan and just to wear something black don't wear anything else just wear something you know wear something long and something black I'm like fuck yeah I'm gonna need James oh my god I'm like no one's gonna I knew because I'm you know that he loves David Lynch mm -hmm. I mean he loves David Lynch so he's a big fan so on my phone <laughs> I had when I went into they said oh they're going to make you up in the makeup chair and you're going to work with the director he's going to film you so I was so excited so I had on my phone ready ready right there ready to sh you know show a picture of David Lynch and I from the set of Mulholland Drive so mm -hmm. I jump in Eleanor Sabatacoya's makeup chair because I knew we always worked with women there's another guy there actually he, he had done whatever because I make up for the, the actual film when we were filming because she got really busy and uh and I I wouldn't get up there like, oh, you should go sit over there. We have a room for you. No, 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 I'm fine right here. So James Wan walks in. And the, what I, the first thing I do is I take my phone and I go, look, look, here's David Lynch and I from Mulholland Drive. Oh my God. He just was like, <laughs> froze, you know, oh my God. And you know, I went, hey, I had an opportunity. I wasn't going to let it go. I wouldn't even leave until they told me I booked it. <laughs> I mean, I was like, because I'm thinking, okay, I, I, I truly thought because I knew for like actually on social media, I had friends that were for a long time telling James Wan, you should take a look at this actress Bonnie Aaron. You should take a look at our friend Bonnie Aaron. Take a look to. I knew one day if I got in front of this man, I would book a job, and I wasn't going <laughs> to let anything stand in my way. Uh 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 uh. -uh. <laughs> so you scared the shit out of him. But I, yeah, I just went in there. So I went, went, you know, so yeah, they had told me after I booked it and I got on the set and I only worked on Conjuring 2 for two days. Are you serious? Wow. Well, I guess yeah. you weren't in that one too much, but there's still a lot. Yeah. There's still a lot of scenes yeah, of you in yeah. there. Hey, it's pretty amazing. I think probably the most amazing thing I ever did in my life, because I don't think another actor did it. I got hired to play a day player role in a big film, mm -hmm. a day player role for two days. Mm -hmm. And then they gave me a full length feature. Yeah. yeah, and you're still essentially yeah, the star. That I just did a, 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 you know, a, a, you know, a day player role in. <laughs> it, it was interesting. I mean, and I replaced the other monster. They had another monster. Right. Okay. I didn't understand the whole thing because I they didn't give me any script. They had another monster, and um, so when I was on the first day of doing this, and James is directing me and blah blah and everything else. He said, to me, come over here, Bonnie. I want you to show you something. I'm going to sit, we're going to sit down and watch something. And he shows me this monster. And he says, do you see, this is what you're replacing. So we're going to, and I went, ah, okay. So he showed me the original, what he had there. And he says, now we're going to take that out and we're going to put you in there. <laughs> That's and awesome. They had rebuilt the, you know, the bedroom. And they rebuilt a lot of the, they had gotten a lot of the set and they rebuilt it all. 
I mean, a lot of it was done on green screen. And um, yeah, so it was pretty amazing because I don't think another actor has done that, which I think is an amazing accomplishment. It's like still that wows me. That's like probably the most wow thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, that's yeah. so impressive. You're literally an icon now that has, you have dolls, oh. you're getting tattooed on people. Like, you know what's funny is like, Oh wait, Chrissy's breaking up. She yeah, she kind of froze. The nun of like her getting her makeup done and all this stuff and the craziest Oh, frozen? Yeah, you're frozen. Okay, now you're back. On catching up. You froze. Are you guys there? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened. Oh, there. Yay. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, okay. we. I think I okay. could hear you. It just kind of froze up. I <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, I, she sent me like a bunch of behind the scenes photos and her just getting her makeup done and stuff. And, you know, it's she's my friend. I didn't really think, but I had the most fucked up nightmares that night of her <laughs> being in my bedroom. It was, it, was, it was so fucked. And I was like, oh my God. I, I, like, I woke up and I told my fiance, I was like, I literally, Bonnie was my nightmare. Like, and it was as the nun and uh, it was just like, that's how powerful that character is. Yeah, I think it's the only thing that's given me nightmares like in the most recent, you know, since I was a kid. Yeah. I am honored. Yay. (laughs) It's a terrifying character. It really, really is. Yeah, because Mm -hmm. a a nun is very, a nun is a real person. Mm -hmm. And there are, I mean, you wouldn't believe the horrific stories fans have told me of their time in this religious schools where they yes. had teachers. And I'm like, holy shit, Val, it's for real. Mm-hmm. There's their nuns <laughs> from hell. I mean, there's a lot of horrific things. I think that is why faith-based horror is so popular is because mm-hmm. it's a real, you, you, you entrust these people. You entrust the priest, you entrust the nuns, you entrust them with so much and then for them, to do horrific things is just is incomprehensible yes, and they get is. away with a lot of it and this is what's so scary that you have no control you they you know a lot of people feel okay they're they're better than i am they're closer to god than i am so they can't you know so they feel controlled by them because they're closer to god mm-hmm. and i think that that's you know uh, we're a lot of, I mean, and I think anybody's the the evil comes into. They're they're you know we're above you. We're close. I I'm closer to God. So right, right. To do whatever heinous thing I tell you or make you do. You're exactly right. So you got to film in Romania too for the nun that the yeah, nun. That was, fun. that it was a beautiful set. It looks amazing. It's, it was enchanting. I mean, Romania is. Yes. In- incredibly beautiful country I mean, we drive along you know and 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 out of these plush and there's no irrigation there because there's so much moisture and rain and the grass and just you see these forests and these castles and literally you think hobbits and you know and and <laughs> unicorns and fairies were going to come flying out of them i mean really <laughs> i mean or the nun or yeah. the nun yeah <laughs> or the nun yes 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 very, um, uh, there was a lot of horrific things that happened there also, mm-hmm. you know? Yes, yeah, so definitely. I'm glad the impalers from there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to his house and I get to tell his castle, I get to tell you, and there was these, I mean, I, I, there was horrific things in these castles in Romania. I mean, the actual real uh, uh, torture things that they, that, I mean, just, just, just horrific, just so disturbing. I mean, more than just, I mean, heinous, just a uh, foul, like from hell. It's actually yeah, literally, yeah. From hell. I mean, the atrocities that happened there and the pain, and you really felt it. And it That's... was very, very disturbing. A lot of it was, you know, you just got to get away. You got to, it was. Uh, yeah, that is, it sounds very disturbing. So without really spoiling anything, I think we've kind of talked about it. You're going to be doing a non two, right? Yeah, yay. Yes. It's you had so started fun. shooting. No. I yeah. love playing that character. It's so much fun playing the character. That's going to be awesome. Do they have a plan of when they're going to start or just still kind of? I, they have, I don't know, but they're going to do yeah. it. I don't know, probably soon. Yeah, I would say so. I, think so. I, you know, yeah, it's a lot of fun playing that character. I love it's it. Such a, like I said, it's one of the only characters to give me, I can watch horror all the time, but that character, 
it's i want a life size knowing but i don't know if i can do it yeah. like the I'm one so that clown over there that. You, yeah. I literally call Bonnie because my daughter is obsessed with her and she's two, which is weird. <laughs> That's like, scary. Like, so. They're like best friends and she has like Bonnie nun dolls. Like, oh my God. <laughs> like she has like a little dollhouse and she had like the nun with the scary face. She's like, look, Bonnie's in the house. And it's like, but I was like, I really <laughs> want to get her a life-size nun for like Halloween, but you can't find them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend. I think he made one, but yes, it's terrifying. I yeah. couldn't imagine being that young and wanting that. I would scare oh, the oh, shit. Oh, she would want it in her room. She would oh love it. God. It's so weird. Her daughter loves horror. She just loves it. She That's does. amazing, though. I mean, she won't be scared by anything, then. Nothing like that. No, last night before we went to bed, she put the, she put the nun to bed in her little doll. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh I adore this kid. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that she's, I was brought up with horror. My parents were huge horror and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. We were we weren't allowed to be scared when I was a little kid. I remember, you know, getting scared at something like the night gallery or something. My mother said, "Well, I'm going to show you something. This is nothing to be afraid of. This is make believe. You want to know something to be afraid of? Don't look both ways before you cross the street. Get afraid. A car's going to hit you. That's yes, that's scary. that's exactly right. That's kind of how it was for me. Night, that's going to be scary. Someone could you know grab you, do that, you know, whatever you you know. That's scary. This is not scary." yeah that's Boy, exactly right arch so her daughter is you know just has no fear because they don't show fear towards no it. yeah she's so comfortable with everybody on that you know we work with she was there when we were making frank and she's like oh and you know she was she's obviously been around bonnie she's not afraid of bond she just like she, our movies are her favorite thing to watch which is but it's weird because she's comfortable and i guess yeah. if you do you don't have like the thing that she's the most afraid of is our robot vacuum. Like she's not afraid <laughs> of it. It's so weird. I don't know if she's going to be screwed up or maybe just right be like the most well-adjusted kid. Yeah, she's obsessed with your, your, your husband, her daddy's bill. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, it started at like seven or eight for me, but two is, that's crazy. That's so crazy. But it's, it's just, also because you're filming this stuff and you're friends with people who are, and it makes sense. Yeah, you know, she likes a, a mommy monster if I play monsters and stuff. She sits while they do my makeup. So she's like super into it. She's like, oh, mommy monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So wrapping up, I have some questions for both of you regarding just next projects and some kind of career motivation. So again, either one of you can start first. Going into 2022, what are your goals and what will be a project you would like to either start or complete? Uh, you want to go first, Bonnie? Yeah. Yeah. For me, at, at, at any, uh, any, yeah. you yeah. know, something really, any really great story. I'm, I'm up for it. I have how about the nun too? Yeah. yeah. How about the, that would be that. Yes. Yeah. Be, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a couple of other things that are coming up and I am excited about it. And um, hopefully everybody will have it together and things won't get postponed. Yes. I'm done with the postponing. Hopefully that is over with. Yes. Um, for me, um, I'm retiring after this. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I have I have a film that I, it was actually the short I mentioned the first short I made that did really well in the festival circuit. I've made that into a feature length and we've, it's been we've been kind of working on um, it's been in development. So I'm hoping to shoot that soon. And um, and then I have a couple other projects I'm working on. And I also have this really cool thing we started doing um it's a podcast on the bloody disgusting podcast network called um bleeders digest i listened to one of those it was really very interesting did you hear oh, mine you. spider lady no i didn't hear that <laughs> one you're on there <laughs> oh i gotta check that one out then yeah that it's it's been a, bonnie is great and she actually came back so over so basically what it is is they're all original scary stories told as a fully immersive theatrical experience so sound effects music kind of has the vibe of like those old school radio shows, but more modern and a little more edgy. And we, we push gotcha. it pretty far, but over this, this month, um, we have a special guest for every single episode. So it's been really cool. And I think that the, uh -oh. want to develop it into either shows or films. Um, but, uh, yeah, the next episode coming up, we just released one with Scout Compton, who was in, you know, Rob Zombie's Halloween films. Yeah, I think and that's then, the one yeah. I listened to. Yeah, yeah, she did. She was great. And uh, she's an awesome girl. And then the next one coming this week is Katie Cassidy, 
who was in Nightmare on Elm Street, um, one, the newer ones, and uh, like right. Boston, just, and she's so great. And uh, we have Chaz Bono, we have Bonnie, um, Bryce Johnson, we have, yeah, it, oh, um, this uh, Laura Manel's doing a character. And it's just been like really, really, really fun and a great way to keep up your writing chops because you have to write all the time, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's a lot of post work, but it's been really cool and bloody disgusting has been the best partner. So yeah, that's something if you guys are into horror, which if you're listening to this, you probably are, make sure you check it out. Yeah. So I highly recommend it. I'll definitely uh, continue. I'll share it on everything too. It's, it's, it is really good. It is. Thank you. Check out my episode. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to oh do that God, after this. Spider lady. That's yeah. Weird. Spider lady. Up. <laughs> yeah see you always it's, he's always playing some crazy ass character up disgusting shit that is <laughs> it is really good it's really intense that's like, gonna be yeah, awesome so original these stories are so original yeah that's yeah it sound the one with scout was really cool i, I loved it so do you think people need Thank to you. go to yeah, school we do you think people need to go to school uh to get into the film industry and i don't know if either one of y'all did but I thought you meant in general that people need oh, to go to school. Yeah, no, no. I'd say like, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, I mean, I'm sure it helps. A lot mm -hmm. of a lot of people I work with um have and then a lot haven't. Um I didn't, you know, I, I, I learned from experience and from doing it, you mm -hmm. know, and making mistakes and learning from them. And so I don't think you have to. I think, you know, it may help you in, in some aspects. And um, there's certainly probably people who are a lot smarter than me because they did go to school. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I, I think really just like anything, it's all about just experience. You know, it's, you can take a gazillion acting classes, but that's not gonna make you a great actor. What's gonna make you a great actor is going out and acting and working at it. And, you know, exactly. same with a, being in a band and playing live, like you can go to music school. That doesn't mean you're gonna put on a great live show and be you know a great performer so yeah I, I think that doing it is more important than school and it's it, I don't think it's a necessary thing but you know it can definitely help what do you think Bonnie well I think yeah I mean I I think well from actually making a film and doing what you do you know having I mean you you know how to operate a computer so that's how <laughs> yeah. you can, at, a, at a very high efficient <laughs> Thank okay, you. So you can edit, you can make music, you know how to use, operate that equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know how to operate that equipment to make your own film, you'll have a little difficulty. See, she <laughs> operate or she can do it, she knows how yeah. to use all the equipment. I don't know how to, you know, operate one of those big professional cameras. No, hell no. <laughs> yeah, she does. She knows how to operate one of those big professional cameras knows how to edit know how to, to mix it and do all that so yeah I, you know she you know you didn't go for, to school for that did you Chrissy oh, did she freeze she froze she might have froze this time that would be interesting because see there you go self-taught oh okay I hear you now did you, did, so I was saying you know you know how to do all this stuff did you go to school to learn all those all, all the how to use all these different equipments no you're a, you're a fucking genius. No, I, I'm self-taught. You're oh, a thank genius. you. I don't know about that, but <laughs> if I'm just putting in the work and the time. You know. Well, you're a fucking thank genius. You. Because not everybody, people can't do that. <laughs> a lot of people can, but a lot of people can, but then, and then yes. we write and do everything else. So to do that, if people want to go to, you know, for, to, to learn how to do that, you know, yeah, I would say some people need to, as far as acting, um, I went to, I had a lot of private training. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, it was hard for me to go to, I mean, I wasn't even accepted into public school because of my disorders until later on. Well, you know, like I was like eight or nine. So that, uh, that was very difficult. I was in it and then I was out of public school and I was in it again. So, um, you know, I just, so for some people, I went to acting classes and did study with a variety of different, different people. And a lot of them told me, forget it, mm -hmm. forget it. Yeah. And a lot of them told, some of them did tell me you're great. And a lot of them tell you're great, but not with that face, you, you know, or a lot of them said, oh, why bother? And, and, but most of them are like, oh, forget it. You just don't, you, you know, but I'm like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't touch the right attitude if someone's telling you that, like seriously. That is, that is. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah, 
So you just have to, so I think, you know, if someone just starts doing some, actually improv is very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think too, like you have to take every experience as a learning experience. You know, you can always learn something from everybody that Absolutely. you work with. Every single set I've worked on. I, it's not like I'm like, oh, I know I, I wrote and directed. I know everything. I, I like to learn from my actors and from, you know, my DP and, and everyone on the set, everybody has something different to offer. And I think as long as you're open and you're always willing to learn and get better and, you know, I didn't, I didn't learn to edit overnight, you know, oh God, I'm sure the first stuff I edited looked awful, you know, but you just keep doing it until you, you, you know, and, and like I said, I still am learning. I'm still, I still can keep learning. And um, I think uh, it's also, it's a creative job. So mm-hmm. it, it's all, you know, rel- like it, it's my vision that I'm putting out there. Right. So it, there's no right or wrong. It's just, this is what I want to present to the world. So, you know, that's not something you can learn in school. That's something you just have to be like, okay, well. Well, you have an innate intelligent that, to intelligence that you tapped into because most people have to go to school to learn yeah. how to use the, the sophisticated equipment that it takes to film. Yeah. And, and I, I think and that and film school is, is amazing because what? you get so to learn. You, you have an innate intelligence that you intelligence that you tapped into. I think that you know there's a lot of parts of people's brains that we just don't tap into, and you are a genius, so you tapped into it. And Thank you. you. Do I don't it. know. Bonnie's my hype man. Yeah. <laughs> I know people, I know people that that can play the piano mm-hmm. just by hearing something. They, don't yeah. Yeah. they can just all of a sudden sit down and play the piano and pick up an instrument that they whatever and just start playing it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, th- I think like, you know, just, just being always open and not thinking you know everything and just like, just learning from, if you can't afford to go to film school, it, you know, there's skills that just, you have to practice them a lot. So as long as you're willing to do the work and willing to fall on your face a lot, but then, you know, keep going, it, you know, you, ultimately you can do anything you want to do. Whether exactly. you go or not. It's just, you know, I think certainly going to school and, and learning a lot of different areas of film is very helpful for a lot of people. I, it's, it would be insane for me not to say that, but yeah, if you're willing to just spend hours and hours learning and making mistakes like I did, then, you know, that, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. If you don't make mistakes, you gotta, you, that's how you learn. You gotta make mistakes. It's exactly how you learn. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. It's like, let, let me see here. Um, would you like to step out of the horror genre? Or do you think this is kind of where you're grounded in both of you? I mean, I feel like at this point, you're probably both pretty set in the horror genre. <laughs> no, I, hey, I started out in comedy, all those Gary Marshall. Things. <laughs> you know how I started out in comedy, comedy, horror, the same thing. Hey, man, I, I'm, I'm an actor, so I love to act. Yeah. If I get these jobs, I mean, and I love playing the nun and I love, I love playing in, in Chrissy's films. You know, those characters that she had me have me playing are, are phenomenal and so much fun. Um, and no, I'm, I'm game for, a, if it's great, it's great. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, oh my God, it has to be horror. But I love doing horror. I love the genre. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and it's fun scaring the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I would definitely, I want to do a little bit of everything. I, I love a good romantic comedy, you know, I love, mm-hmm. I, I, I love dramas. I, I, I like all types of film and um, it just, so I just kind of been going with wherever my creativity with writing has taken me and it, Bonnie's right. Horror is and genre film is so fun. Yeah. Um, it's it, and you can kind of, there's no rules because nothing is real. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's no where if you're writing a, a love story, I mean, you got some parameters working around, you well, Frank know. Frank is a little bit of a love story. Mm-hmm. Frank, Frank is Frank is a little <laughs> bit of one, everything. That one that you know, Azure's uh, 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 segment. Yeah, Azure's she segment. She plays a she plays a woman that does it that's lonely and wants a you know a, a, a you know a man. So y'all you'll just can watch that and see how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Well, I think uh, I think that's kind of been the beauty of like making Frank is that I got to. Uh, pull in a lot of genres that I liked within the horror storyline you know there's there's definitely an entire segment that's comedic it's a 
you know, the third story with Lindsay LaRose plays um, Ruby's stepmother and she's like this really rich, young, like does not care about anybody but herself character. But it was so fun because it wrote itself. I've met so many people in the real world that just I could pull from that I'm like, this is this is like 25 people I know all combined in one. And so that was really a fun character. And then, yeah, and then you get the romance and the, the, the hopeless romantic girl that Azure was, which was fun to do. And, and then, yeah, and then you get like the really scary, slow, uh, like in your bedroom in the dark at night story, which was the second story. And um, so, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I want to dabble in everything and, as far as acting it's fun to do everything because it's you know you you can only be stabbed to death so many times and you're like okay like, yeah. what else? Yeah, well, you, know? you guys so you do get it so well ah, you, <laughs> get it. Yeah. Oh, you take it so well <laughs> yeah, especially from you bonnie thank you <laughs> so after frank and i live alone do you have any plans to work with bonnie again or this never know, again never I'm, again I'm, you're, you're done off. now <laughs> Done. I'm Honestly, gonna, after this, I'm after this, I'm never gonna, speaking to her again. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yes, of course. I, I think that Bonnie wouldn't have it any other way, even if I tried. Bonnie's not letting oh, me go and do anything. Right her. there. <laughs> yeah. Right in your face nonstop. I no, think people, definitely. yeah, people will be begging for more after these two movies. I think so. They're going to yeah, want more. I think people are going to see a whole new side of Bonnie too that I you know, they see her as this, you know, because if you play such an iconic character like the nun. Yeah, it's well, hard to take away yeah. from that. Yeah, and I, I, and these characters are very, you know, they really develop and unfold. And I think that it's just such a different roles for her. So I think it's really cool. It's going to, people are going to really enjoy watching her in these. Um, oh, she's so good. I did, but everybody else will. No, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm like now roasting Bonnie. <laughs> roast me what do i care i've been roasted before oh I've been man i'm a crispy critter <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh that's funny well we'll wrap everything up like so bonnie and chrissy you both are beautiful talented and amazing women there's no doubt about it i definitely want to thank both of you from the bottom of my heart for coming on here today and talking horror and so again just to remind everybody where are we going to be able to watch frank and i live alone uh and when are both of them coming out so Frank, October 25th on VOD. So, you know, any platforms like Apple, Amazon, et cetera. And then I Live Alone, December 21st, same thing, VOD. And uh, and like I said, there are maybe some announcements. So if you follow us on our social media, there may be ways to see them earlier or um, have some special, you know, behind the scenes experiences. So we're very excited. I hope everybody enjoys them as much as we did making them. <laughs> I'm very excited myself. Is there anything else that either one of y'all would like to add as we finish up? Just thank you for having us. It was, you're a great interview. And I, it's always fun to talk to someone who loves horror as much as we do. So. Oh, absolutely. No, thank y'all for coming on. Um, I definitely appreciate it. I, but so best wishes to both y'all and your future endeavors and everything. I hope, uh, I hope everything goes great for sure. And we'll probably talk soon. Okay, for sure. Thank you so much for everything. Yes, ma'am. I will talk to y'all soon. Okay, bye. Bye.